Hey guys, what's up? Today we've got a review on the MMS 198, the D03 edition, which is the diecast, the third diecast figure by Hot Toys. It's actually the Mark II of War Machine, and here we've got a nice first picture on the figure and the box. So, as I said, the first diecast figure by Hot Toys. Also, they gave us a new packaging. I'll just show you in the video review after what you get of the figure and of course some close-ups and probably I will do a little comparison with the old war machine. Okay to the packaging as you can see there's a plastic cover on top of the upper half of the box and there's a silverish part of all the details on the figure's title. Um, the writings are done in white lining drawing on top of the plastic case and underneath we've got the schematics of War Machine, the Mark II version. Then you can lift up the first part of the box and of course you can take out the inner boxing of the figure and here we've got the styrofoam packaging which you know from the Iron Monger for example and it's quite sturdy and there's the inner boxing which is covered and you just can take out and then in there sits the actual figure and underneath you've got a second bottom with the actual base and some other parts and accessories so guys here we go war machine 2.0 by hot toys and i'm definitely amazed with this one you feel the new quality and the weight in some parts, of course, in this uh, diecast figure. Not all the parts are diecast. I will get back to you with this in some seconds. So let's go first to the accessories. And yeah, it's not that much that you actually get with the figure. Here we've got, of course, the new design minigun for a war machine. That will show you afterwards how to put on the back, but as you can see there are some different ankles and joints that you can use to rotate and display the <coughs> minigun the way you want. Then this part here is actually a cover for the left forearm that covers the minigun, uh, the machine gun. And then of course you get different hand sculpts. And the one that's definitely most interesting here is this army salute or navy salute pose, posed hand. That's quite nice. Another important part to know about this figure is that you don't get the batteries actually inside the suit. So you have them in a separate compartment in the box and you have to manually insert it into the suit. And for this you get this cool little screwdriver that actually works. So I will show you just right off the different places where to put the batteries. Of course they are in the left and the right arm somewhere down there below you have to um, flip off a little cover and then there's the little screw then of course on the back side is the part for or the battery compartment for the arc reactor on the front and here comes another a separate piece into the game which is this back plate here so this back plate goes right on top of the torso section back torso section and this is actually die cast so don't be afraid to give it some force so the final battery compartment is of course in the head sculpt itself and this is also a new way they've done it on this figure you have to lift up this little cover here on the forehead and underneath there you will see the screw and unfortunately also the button to light up the LED eyes so that's a bit of unfortunate. Um, of course you have the positive side that you don't have a button outside somewhere in the neck or so. But yeah, it's a bit, a bit of a hassle to actually put this piece back on and then again just take it off just, to hit, uh, just for hitting a button. So that's a bit of a hassle but in the end it's all battery op um, operated and you won't probably have the figure laid up in your shelf all the time.
Okay, let's move to the back side. As I said, here is the machine gun, the newly designed, very futuristic one. And here's also a bit of a letdown. I thought the machine gun could move all the way down through the, this gap here or this rail, but in reality, you just have the option to clip in this rail and uh, this this gun into the rail with um, on certain places. So you've got one, two, three, four, five places where you actually can fit the rail. So that's how it works. Somehow like this, it will snugly fit in there. And afterwards, of course, you've got all the the limitations or the possibilities that you get with these different ankles. So you can uh, swivel it like this one or rotate it like this. And of course, on top there's also uh, some some articulation. Of course you can swivel it like this one if you have it in a deactivated stance somehow. It's all possible, no problem. Also if you want to put it like this, just it all will work quite nicely and easily achievable. So that's definitely the most interesting accessory with this figure. So let us continue downwards again to the to the machine guns on the forearms, which is actually just this one on the left arm. I try to focus it down here a bit. So as you can see, there are all these little ridings on the armor, which is just amazing. And this one is some is actually packed, so you can remove it. And the other part, the closed one, as I showed before. You also can just peg on it. That's the way it works. So nothing special here. A bit like the first war machine. Um, on the right side arm, I'm, I think they don't uh, give us this option. I have no idea if the actual war machine suit in the film um, had a machine gun there. But I think it should because it's one of the most unique features on this suit. And of course it says danger there. Then a quick look at the newly designed stand and display base. As you can see, you got another a sort of rod here, which is actually a bit more stable than the other plastic rods that you usually get with Iron Man figures on their plastic lines. And it also says in the instructions that you shouldn't use the normal ones or even the dynamic stand because the, the figure is just too heavy. Then here we've got the newly designed base with the light-up feature all around the base itself. I'll just turn off the light a bit. As you can see, there's a nice blue whitish effect going on. And this, of course with the name plating going on there on the front. Okay guys, so before we get back to the top, let's have a deeper look on the armor parts itself. I think this part here is still plastic, I'm not totally sure, but OMG, the famous photographer of earliest Hong Kong release by Hot Toys, has put up an image where he shows which parts are plastic and which are parts are die cast. So I'll try to find this one and put it on top of this video with an overlay feature or something, so maybe you will see it right now on top of the video. So let's continue upwards, as you can see some nice detailed um, decals that are going on on the thigh armor. And this gold bronze shimmery look on the legs actually disappears when we go up into the torso area. So it's, here's all clean and nice silver. So that's definitely a cool effect. I have no idea how they do this, but it looks damn amazing and real. Also here the nice decals going on and continuing. I love this, these vines here. And it also says danger, danger. This looks amazing. 
Okay, let's continue further on with the torso armor. As you can see, all, also there are lots of prints. Lieutenant Colonel James Rhodes. And of course, some other decals going on on the arms. Here's the lit up arc reactor, which is a bit newly designed. If I turn off the lights a bit, as you can see, it will maybe look a bit bluish, but in reality, it's a pure white, so that's quite amazing. Let's get to the back side. Also, lots of decals going on. Here's actually the battery compartment to the arms. The machine you also already saw. And yeah, what can I say more? It looks freaking, freaking clean. So definitely a Mark II, a step forward to the original war machine design. And first and final for the sculpting, here's a close-up on the head sculpt or the, the helmet, which is actually plastic. That's a bit also a bit unfortunate, but it looks extremely detailed. Look at this vents going on there, and also the light-up feature works flawlessly. There's also this little right highlighting going on around the eyes. That's quite amazing. It reminds me a bit of the Mark V armor because of this plating design on the front. So let's continue with articulation because it's one of the new diecast figures. It's a bit more interesting in terms of what you can achieve with articulation. There are some things to consider and to get attention to it, which is for example the gap on uh, shoulder armor here you actually have to lift up the whole arm first and then you can rotate it forward or backward if you want to lift up the actual forearm you should actually pull down the whole the whole arm and that somehow the, sh the shoulder part gets down into this socket here that it could uh, it can freely rotate then Hotas also gave us a newly designed way how to manage a bit more articulation on the thigh which is actually done with these flaps. These are plastic, you can move it upwards and so you get a bit more of free and range and motion. Um, early before I managed to pop out the leg but it just popped in easily so don't be afraid to actually have a bit of fun playing with this figure. Um, of course, then there's the torso part. So these are the die cast parts. You can hear it. And there's a lot of, well, I think it's about 45 degrees that you can turn the whole figure. Then also in the feet or boot, you will have some newly designed articulation. They have a better stand, you actually can pull down the, fur, the, the the most prominent part on the top of the boot and also on the back you have some bit more of range and motion. So because of the weight of the figure and the newly designed boots it's quite easily uh, manageable to get the figure stand on its own so it's no problem. You probably can achieve a lot of poses just without using the actual stand. As I said in the intro, I will give you a little comparison to the first war machine by Hot Toys. It's a bit dusty, but you definitely see the, uh, see the origin where Hot Toys is coming from. This was actually one of my first Hot Toys figures, I think, in the end of 2010 or in the beginning of 2011. And it was the start into all my Iron Man Hot Toys collecting. And I'm still amazed how this figure looks. And if you have both figures in hand, probably you will definitely feel a bit more stable and secure with the new die cast figure. But all in all, if you have somehow the chance to get the first Iron Man War Machine by Hot Toys, you should go for it because it's just very cool to see how the war machine suit evolved from part 2 to part 3. As you can see here, we've got this old-fashioned minigun with the bullet string going on. 
then of course the big bulky machine guns but all in all I'm quite happy that Hot Toys gave us of course this first version of War Machine and this is actually just a concept version well it wasn't the movie I think in the movie we've got the Iron Patriot concept or redesign um, of Rhodey and I think the actual Mark II idea with this um, paint job came from an Iron Man 3 Prelude comic uh, that was somehow I've never saw it in person but you probably can get it in s some parts of the internet if you want to search for it just type in Iron Man 3 Prelude so guys I'm closing this video review with a final pose this Navy salute pose which is easily achievable no problem at all with the newly developed um, hand sculpt so quite cool and what can I say final conclusion is if you're a, an Iron Man collector of course you have to get this figure it's also the first diecast figure by Hot Toys you get a lot of a feel and quality back it's quite a heavy figure and it just feels a lot better in hand than all the plastic armors you we've got with uh, Hot Toys before so I'm definitely amazed can't wait for the Iron Patriot release and of course the Mark 42 release and there's even was the news today of the Whiplash armor which also comes in diecast so that's definitely the way to go for Hot Toys now I think also the newly uh, released Robocop figure will have diecast parts so that's quite amazing Thanks guys for watching. I will see you probably on Saturday on the figure talk by Rhino. So thanks again Rhino for managing and organizing this figure talk. It's always a pleasure to have the boys and uh, all together in one cool chat room. And yeah, until then, thanks for watching. And to all my subscribers, thank you for your support. Have a good one. Bye bye.